Hey, how's it going? Before I start this video, I just want to say that I'm not trying to demotivate anyone who's aspiring to be a content creator and I'm not trying to put blame on anyone. I think it's an important topic though and something that should be discussed. YouTube is a great platform and I know that a lot of people are benefiting from it and do what they love. So keep that in mind. Reason I'm making this video is because quite recently I made a video talking about how much I earned from YouTube on my first year being monetized and I saw how well it resonated with people who are starting their YouTube journey or they are growing their YouTube channel. I've been getting a lot of videos from successful creators talking about how this platform changed their life and I noticed that most of them focus on positives like what a life-changing experience it was, how it's much better placed creatively than their 9 to 5 job. And I wanted to give my two cents on the subject and do a bit of a balancing act, uh, talking about more of a negative side as well. Uh, maybe not negative side, but something that you should be aware of if you're on this journey. I've been more serious about posting for the last three years or so, so I hope that this video will give more of an insight from my personal experience and then also I made sure that I researched the topic quite well and get some different sources. So what I'm thinking is not coming out of the thin air. If you watched YouTube tips videos, the common thread is that everyone can do it. Basically story goes like this. You select a niche, you create videos around it, you stay consistent, improve, and success is pretty much given to you. It's almost guaranteed. In some cases, this is taken a step further, like do this and your channel will blow up in three months. Those channels might give you one or two specific examples when somebody did that. And then you think to yourself, now because I have all this knowledge and somebody clearly managed to do that, why? can't I do that? And to some degree you would be right. There is no one stopping you from trying and pursuing that and potentially succeeding. And I'm not saying that all of that advice is untrue and you wouldn't get anywhere. The problem here is that you're being sold a dream. Selected examples most of the time are outliers. And when you look at the data, chances of making a living out of content creation uh, pretty slim. Based on this blog post published by Tim Queen who looks at eight different sources like YouTube, Google, Social Blade, only 10% of YouTube channels have more than 1,000 subscribers and only 2% of those YouTube channels ever reach 10,000 subscribers. Also this article by Awesome Creator Academy that looks at similar sources like Tim Queen talks about how 6% of all YouTube channels are in YouTube Partner Program and in case you don't know YouTube Partner Program is when you can actually monetize your videos, getting some revenue from ads that YouTube shows on your videos. And of course there is many other ways you can monetize your channel like memberships, Patreon, selling products, but I think it still gives pretty good idea on how difficult it is to start earning money as a content creator. Reason I'm using YouTube here as an example is because I believe that YouTube still has by far better monetization options than Instagram or TikTok and it pays its creators way more. Also the relationship that the creator has with his audience is way more close than in those platforms. Now if we think about those 6% for a moment, those 6% include celebrities, news channels, big creators that potentially have more than one channel, groups of creators that are working on single channel. So what I'm getting at is not 6% of individuals, it's 6% of everyone. I get that I'm painting a very bleak picture here, so let me balance it a little bit. Of course, there are a lot of channels that gave up after single upload. There are scam channels, there are bots. Those potentially account for large volume of channels as well. At the same time, there are a lot of people who post regularly. They spend significant amount of time editing, improving their gear, improving their scripts, and they are still struggling to get any views. It's easy to think that everyone is making a lot of money when you go through your feed and you see all of these people with those examples where they make thousands of dollars and their channels popping off. Ironically, you don't hear about people who are struggling because well, they're struggling. They are not popping on your front page. You never hear about them. So if you think that I'm exaggerating here, do this, even though it might hurt this video's retention, go on your front page, 
find the video that has at least 50,000 views and as long as this video is not about celebrity or some news or something that you would get only two search results for search for that topic and then filter on upload date and that's where you're gonna find a lot of creators you probably never heard from you can check their channels and in some cases they are posting regularly a lot of videos and quite good quality as well arguably following advice that they got from youtube tips channels or from their favorite creators i think we're getting at the point with content creation similar to that of acting careers and music industry whenever i think and talk about it and i hear people say that being content creator is my dream for some reason beginning of this very specific red hot chili peppers video comes to mind it's from the video tell me baby where at the beginning there are a lot of people talking about how creating music is their dream and how they are struggling to do that in california a lot of new generation is on social media and it's their dream to be youtuber tiktoker or instagrammer and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that statistics on the subject are a bit unreliable because some of the sources say that it's 52 percent of interviewed kids but then you look around and it's only thousand kids that have been interviewed in other cases it's like 30 percent and it also depends on the country where those kids are from it seems like in us and uk those numbers are a bit higher and in other countries they're a bit lower whatever the number is content creation is perceived as career path and we can see it in the effect and we can see the new generation coming on the platform as well especially last year a lot of new generation and young youtubers started popping off with completely different approach to the platform channels i talk about here are natalie lynn wholesome simon life of riza called kerwin and i'm sure there are many more i've missed but if you watch their videos you can see that they're pushing boundaries and they are redefining what this platform is all about and of course it's great for the the platform and the viewers at the same time baseline quality expectations are changing 10 years ago you could just get yourself a gopro and quality wise you would already stand out and then if you're traveling even better you would probably get to the point in your youtube journey that would take you double the time right now you also have other apps competing for viewers attention like tiktok instagram even youtube shorts and then you see videos popping up saying how this is the best time to start a youtube channel it's not. It was 10 years ago. Is it a good idea to start a YouTube channel right now? That's another question and the answer is probably yes. You would learn a lot of skills, a lot about yourself. You might find things that you didn't even know that you like. For example, myself, I found that I love cameras and camera gear. I didn't know that before, I never had camera. And to be honest, it's a very rewarding thing to do, especially when you spent a lot of time making a video, you see it through, you complete it, post it, and then you see that people are benefiting from that video. Maybe they are learning something or they find that video entertaining. It's a great feeling. And I personally love doing it so far and that's the reason I keep on doing it. But I'm not foreseeing quitting my job anytime soon to pursue it full time. And when we talk about quitting a job to pursue content creation full time, money plays an important role. Most of us don't have a luxury to quit our jobs and have no income for six months to a year. And there's also another side of the coin, pun intended, when we talk about monetization on YouTube, I think when we start talking about income that you can potentially live off, it probably starts from somewhere like 10,000 subscribers. That is if you don't live in any major city. Based on stats I mentioned before, it's around 2% of all YouTube channels. At this point, income from views is still very marginal unless you're making videos about finance or other high RPM niches. So to supplement your income and basically pay rent, you have two options. You can either go to work for some other YouTuber or to get some kind of traditional job, work in a cafe, something like that part-time. Chances are you quit your nine to five because you don't really want to work for someone. So your other option is to take every sponsorship that comes your way. At 10,000 subscribers, it's probably not a whole lot of companies that are reaching out to you. So you don't have a whole lot of choice to pick from. So even if you don't like the company, you don't like the product, ethics might be questionable you still have to take it to survive and that's pretty shit situation to be in presenting a product or a software to an audience that you worked so hard in building with something that you don't even believe yourself must be really tough and it also impacts the trust of people watching you for some people probably doesn't matter you can look at logan paul who scams his audience for years and people still defend him and watch his videos but 
If you're watching this video, most likely you are not looking up to Logan Paul. So here comes the irony. One of the most profitable niches on YouTube is to make videos about how to make videos on YouTube. And you probably won't find it a standalone niche anywhere. And it's pretty hard to pinpoint how much those channels are making. But looking at most profitable niches on the platform and where this niche would probably fall into, it's probably going to be these categories. Digital marketing, YouTube kind of falls into that right off the bat. But then if you are teaching different marketing techniques, etc., it definitely fits this niche. Personal finance, a lot of channels would go into detail on how you financially need to prepare yourself for your YouTube journey. Gear and gadgets, YouTube requires quite a lot of gear to make videos and quite a bit of software. Education, you're teaching people how to grow on YouTube and potentially some marketing techniques, etc. So that's a tick as well. Funny enough, all of those categories are some of the best paid categories on the platform. So I'm not here saying that all of those YouTube tips channels are bad and people there are just looking to profit. I personally benefit from the advice that they have given and I'm sure that there are thousands of creators who are starting daily that benefit from that advice. That's not what I'm saying at all. But we get to the gray area when we start seeing courses popping up from those channels. Like you can learn everything you want on this channel for free, but if you really want to improve, go get a course and that course will cost you $4,000. Does it mean that the videos on the channel are not that useful and you potentially are just wasting your time watching them? Maybe, but it definitely makes a great funnel to sell the course, especially when you make sure that people believe that running a YouTube channel is pretty much guaranteed success. And you know, if you look from perspective of private schools are, you know, expensive and you have to pay for them, university is paid as well. But the problem is that it's not the same comparison. If you are getting terrible grades at school, most likely teacher is not gonna come to you and say, you know what, I really see potential in you. Medical school and top university is just around the corner. Just, you know, just submit homework on time and you're definitely gonna get to those top schools. Also, when you graduate and you get a diploma, chances of getting a job is not 2%. And you're also not competing in the global market, you're probably competing in that city or that town. Thing that bothers me the most is the time frame that you're given. Like, oh, in three months, you probably will be flying with 100,000 subscribers. You know, and this 4,000 that you're paying right now is an investment and you probably will be able to pay it off, you know, in one day once once you reach that end goal. Sounds a lot what finance gurus do when they're trying to sell you some shitty course with the information that you could have got from three books for 30 euros. It's same as when you hear about uni dropouts that happen to be billionaires years later, and then you think to yourself, damn, you know, but maybe I should quit university as well and then start something like Facebook. Uh, now, let me get the course with the last money I have and that will teach me how to do that step by step. But now let's say that you're in, you managed to overcome a lot and you're probably making videos for a living, you're able to support yourself and your family. A lot of people argue that if you pursue this career, you're going to have way more creative freedom and work-life balance. But how much of this is true? At the beginning of this year, we saw a lot of YouTubers quitting. In a lot of cases, successful YouTubers trade their 9 to 5 to 24 seven. You constantly need to come up with new material, new videos, something that pleases algorithm, grows your channel. You have to stay relevant and get your subscribers to come for more. Been a video a week for 10 years. I never broke the streak. Can't keep this up. This is my dream job and I have a lot of fun doing it. I know I'm incredibly lucky, but a dream job is still a job and it's a job that keeps getting bigger and more complicated. <laughs> I'm so tired. I was aware of it at the time, but only in retrospect do I look back and it's like, wow, mm. the destructiveness of that on my own marriage and relationship was right. mm -hmm. profound. And I talked to my wife about it now and she says with no equivocation, she was like, you have no, not to me, because I did know, but she says publicly, she's like, you have no idea how close to divorce we were. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because it was like when I wasn't superficially being nice to get her to behave to be in my mm -hmm. videos, 
I was working, I was yeah. just working. Regarding creativity, of course you need that, but YouTube favors niches. And when you make hundreds of videos about similar topic, eventually it gets boring and there is so much you can come up with creatively. Shifting a niche when you already have successful YouTube channel might be very difficult because you already created an audience and you probably have sponsors and maybe you have a product around that. So for example, if you are making tech videos and you've been making it for years and now you manage to create a business and that's what you're interested in and you run it successfully for a very long time, most likely you won't be able to use it in your main channel. You will have to create something new. So to summarize, and I'm sorry, it's, it, it got very dark very quickly <laughs> while, I'm, while I'm shooting this video. We're wrapping it up. Basically, as I said at the beginning, the purpose of this video wasn't to discourage anyone from pursuing this career. I would be a hypocrite if I did that. But it was more of a message to people not to follow that blindly. Don't quit your job at the first opportunity you get because you might really struggle financially and it might take a long time to build up YouTube channel to the point where you are happy and you can uh, generate enough income to support yourself. And you know, like you, you might be one in a million or one in a trillion that p pick up and you know, they make hundreds of thousands of dollars immediately. More likely than not, you're probably gonna end up in that statistic that it will take you years to get to the point where you start earning a single dollar a day. And that's what I wanted to focus most on. So if there's at least one person who watched this video and you know, they had 200 subscribers, but now they were looking to spend the last money on a YouTube course and quit their job, go all in without any proof of concept that the content might be working and you know, they might be making any money from it. And if I saved at least one person like that, I would consider this video to be a success. And that's the main reason I made it. It's very dark. Time for me to finish this video. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.